What's going on, everybody? This is Clint with the Die Hard MMA Podcast. This podcast was filmed exclusively for Odds.com. Be sure to click the link below. Check it out. We've got everything that you need over there. We've got you covered for every sport. Thank you so much for the support, and good luck on all your action this week. Next fight coming up here is one that I cannot wait to talk about, James. In fact, I think I'm going to let you lead this one because I, I might have my uh, tinfoil cap on here. Lightweight fight, Drakkar Close taking on Luis Pena. Close is 11-2-1, coming off a bad knockout loss. Pena is 8-3, and three, also coming off of a bit of a bad knockout loss and filling in short notice here. Talk to me about these guys. So yeah, it was supposed to be Jakar Close and Jai Herbert. Uh, Luis Pena steps up on a couple weeks' notice to to take this fight, but I'm glad to see Jakar is still on the card. He hasn't fought in a while since he competed against Benil Dariush. I did interview Jakar Close uh, before this fight when he was supposed to fight Jai Herbert, but a lot of good tidbits in that interview because there's a couple things I didn't know that I found out during that interview. The first being he is no longer fight ready anymore. Uh, he didn't mention the coach's name specifically, but I think we know who he was talking about. He said he basically had a falling out with Eddie Cha, so he's no longer there anymore, and he's been training at a couple Muay Thai gyms there. He's been training a bit with Sean O'Malley. So that to me is a bit of a red flag in the sense that, you know, I think fight ready was a, was a good fit for him. There's a lot of good training partners there. Um, I know he did spend a good uh, chunk of his camp training with Michael Johnson. Johnson's out in Arizona now training out there. So I think that's good. At least, you know, Johnson's a veteran, good guy to train with there, but uh, yeah, close has not fought since the Benil Dariush fight, which if you go back and watch that fight, like, you know, yeah, he got knocked out and obviously, you know, first time he was finished in his career, but I thought close was looking good leading into that knockout, believe it or not. I mean, he was landing some shots on Benil as well. And we've seen the run that Benil has gone on recently, of course, getting that win over Diego Ferreira a few weeks ago. So um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a bad loss to have. This is a guy in general that uses his wrestling very well. He typically wins fights. He might not be the most exciting fighter in the division, but he's a guy that is going to get it done, right? You look at the UFC record outside of the David Tamer loss um, and, and the Darius loss. He's got wins over Bobby Green, Lando Venata, Dia Casey in a fight where I know he's an underdog there. So he gets it done when he needs to. Jakar uh, Close, 32 years old, five foot nine with a 70 inch reach. Luis Pena, like he is with most of his opponents, is the much bigger opponent. Six foot three with a 75 inch reach. So five inch reach advantage for Luis Pena, a little bit taller as well. But can he use that height and reach to his advantage? It has backfired. I mean, uh, you look at the Matt Frevola fight. You look at the, you know, Kama Worthy fight where fights that I thought Pena should have won. He didn't end up getting it done here. Um, so, yeah, Pena hasn't fought since June of last year as well. So both of them coming off uh, pretty decent layoffs into this fight. Pena, of course, now training an American top team, which I think is a much better fit for him in terms of bodies and training partners. Prior to that, he was at AKA. Uh, this is how I see this fight, Clinton. I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. I think Close is going to do a good job of using his wrestling really, you know, neutralizing a lot of the weapons that Luis Pena has, whether it's his stand-up, whether it's his ground game. Um, I, I think you could see, I mean, if you look at Pena here, if you look at some of his opponents here, I'm not seeing a lot of great wrestlers, right? And that's something that Close is sort of, you know, he can always fall back on. His striking's getting better as well. We're seeing Jakar obviously, you know, make uh, make improvements in that area. And like I said, one of the gyms he's training at right now is like actually just like a Muay Thai gym. So I think we're going to see more of the striking on display, but he can always go back to the wrestling. And that's something where I could see him getting the takedowns and really sort of grinding out a fight. Because there's, uh, what what fight was it? it was a Steven Peterson fight that was a fight I thought I couldn't believe he won I thought Peterson had edged that one out as well so we've seen times where Pena has not been able to capitalize and I think this is another opportunity there so the odds right now like I said close is a slight favorite in this one I actually like him a lot better by decision. Close is not a finisher, at least not in the UFC. He doesn't have a single finish. You have to go all the way back to August of 2015, the last time Jakar Close had a finish in a fight. So right now, I was looking at it the other day, and I, also, I talked about this on my breakdown yesterday. Where am I getting the odds here? Here we go. Uh, Jakar Close by decision is um, actually, it's only minus 105, so you're not getting a ton of value there, but um, it, it may be better than almost close to two to one odds at the same time. But I just don't see Close finishing Luis Pena he might but I don't know either way I think this is closest fight to lose curious your thoughts on this okay okay so I I like it and yeah I spotted on his Instagram that he was no longer at fight ready and for me that's a massive red flag I like fight ready I like what they do I feel like they've got one of the best strength and conditioning programs in the game today so the fact that he is Hopping around Arizona, he was at the MMA lab, then he went to fight ready. Now he's at TW, BJJ, and, Moy and, and MMA, and he's fighting with Michael Johnson, a guy that just got cut from the UFC. Like He seems lost, James. Mm -hmm. He seems like a man who has lost his way. Now, he does walk his opponents down. He has sharp boxing. I like what I see from his hands. He has heavy, hard leg kicks and good submission defense. That's something that's got to be said. The guy, he went with Benil Dariush on his back for an entire round and didn't 
didn't give up a sub, which is something not a lot of people can say. This is a bit of a step down for him going to Luis Pena. I mean, not a bit of a step down. It's a large step down in competition from Benil Darius to Luis Pena. But the thing I spotted when you look at his stats is he's actually only got a 68% takedown defense rating. Now, that sounds like it's pretty good. That's not bad. But anytime you dip below that 70% mark, that's where I start to worry just a little bit. Luis Pena coming in here on short notice. He's been training at ATT. That's where he's been for a long time. And if you don't know, Peter Jan, the champion, has moved over to ATT for this camp, and they've been getting work in together as well. He's tall. He's long. He has good level changes. He relies on that grappling. And at 155, he's just massive compared to everybody else. And when he is on top, he has dominant positions he he is so precise and positional with his grappling that if he can out grapple you you're in trouble and then he's got that body triangle that you just can't get out of he's got those lanky long legs he knows how to tie them around your body and the only uh issue that i think he's had is when people are able to match his size and his physicality i bet against Luis pena against Kama Worthy when he was a big underdog because everybody underestimated my boy Kama, comes in here as a plus 200 underdog, gets the finish late in the fight. And I'll tell you something, James. I went back and I rewatched that fight leading up to this because you know I got to do my tape study. You know I got to do my research. Luis Pena was winning that fight until Kama Worthy snuck that submission in there. Luis Pena made one mistake late in the third round and he got his neck caught in the long, lanky arms of Kama Worthy. He struggled with someone who was able to match his height and reach and then made one mistake at the end. I feel like this is an overreaction. If you look at where this line opened up, the bookies had these guys as basically a pick em. Drakkar Close was a minus 135 favorite. And he got smoked all the way up to minus 230 with so many people just looking to fade Luis Pena, jump on the train. This might be a spot where I take the classic pivot and return. We bet on Kama Worthy in his UFC debut against Pena because he was a plus 200 underdog, and he did exactly what we needed him to do. It was a very close competitive fight. He got the win for us. We faded him against Otman Azatar in his next fight because we knew now everyone's on the hype train. This is the exact opposite effect. The recency bias of Luis Pena losing to this guy Kama, who now they've seen get knocked out in the UFC, is what's driving this line the way that it is. This is a very close fight. I think that Pena is going to have the height and reach advantage. And Drakkar Close is not an explosive close the distance kind of guy. He's going to be plodding. He's going to walk forward. He's going to try and get in range. And Pena can just jab his face off for 15 minutes. Once Drakkar Close does get in range, again, we're in the apex. We're in the small cage. It favors grapplers like nobody's business. And if he can do the same thing Benil Dariush did with just controlling the body of Close, I'm not saying he's the same level as Benil Dariush, obviously, but if he can just control the body of Close against the cage or get him to the ground, he's absolutely going to be live to make this thing close, tight, and hairy. And honestly, this is going to be a dogger pass spot for me. I'm going to wait. I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to watch all the money roll in on Drakkar Close. And if I can get 2-1 to one on Luis Pena, folks, I'm going to back the dog. Interesting. I can see it, like I said, because, you know, Pena's, like you said, a height and reach advantage. Jacquard, actually, I'm trying to even think if Jacquard's fought a guy that's like, you know, a lot bigger than him uh, in his career. I'm just looking at some of the opponents. Not, no one really stands out for from that regard. So we'll oh. see. We'll see. We'll see for sure. And, and let me, I, I want to break down Jacquard close. I, I, I'm going to catch a lot of heat for this pick, like I always do when I go against the market and take the mm -hmm. underdog nobody sees coming. Um, let's look at his record. His record in the UFC is phenomenal. He's only got two losses. But he's got a split decision over Mark Diacasey. Mm -hmm. Diacasey hasn't turned out to be the fighter we expected him to be in the UFC. That was a razor-thin fight. He has a decision loss to David Tamer. That's a bad loss, James. You shouldn't be losing to either of the Tamers if you're UFC caliber. Well, hold on. I, think you're not. Hold, hold on. I just got to point out one thing quickly. I think you're confusing the Tamer brothers because David Tamer actually has a good record in the UFC. His brother does not. A lot of people you're get right. that mixed up. If you look you're at right. David Tamer, I don't even know what he's doing right now. I think he lost his last fight. We haven't seen him since. He actually has a good UFC record. Just want to point that out because I know you're people, absolutely get brother, correct. people get the brothers mixed up. I'm a little too harsh on that. I mixed up the Tamers there. You're it's right. All, it's all but good. No worries. No worries. Groovy Lando Venata. That's a guy with no fight IQ. That's a guy with slick striking that never does the right thing. Bobby Green, we've talked about this guy a million times. He fights to his opponent's level of competition, and he's lost so many decisions that it's not even funny because he just can't do what you need to do to win the game. And then Chris Jos 
Jagos. Now that's a decent win. That's a half decent win. But again, he's not a guy that's necessarily lighting anybody on fire. He's relatively limited. He's a decent grappler and a decent boxer. It's his best win. And it's not that great of a win. So I, he's mid-tier, Drakkar Close is. I'm not sold that this guy is ever going to be a, a problem in the UFC. And Luis Pena, as much as he's been a disappointment, he's only 27. He's still hungry. He's still growing. He's still filling into his frame. He's still at ATT training with guys like Peter freaking Jan. He's going to get better. And like I said, he was beating Kama Worthy until he made the one mistake late in that fight. And he plays the game, James. He's not going to be this guy that decides... I'm just going to do something flashy and let this thing slip away. He's going to wrestle. And if he wrestles for 15 minutes, this fight could be close. It could be a split. He could lock up uh, you know, a, a takedown late in the round that steals it for him. That's the side that I think I want to be on in this fight, especially if I'm getting around two to one. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to just point out there. And again, I like, I like, I, you're bringing a lot of good points to the table, and I 100% agree here, but I just want to clarify a few things. First off, the DKZ fight. I was at that fight. I'm even looking on MMA decisions right now. Not a single media member scored that fight for Mark DKZ in that fight. It should have been a unanimous decision. It wasn't an exciting fight, but I thought Close clearly won that matchup. So I, I know you brought up that it was a split and the DKZ is not that good. I agree there. I mean, if you would have finished the fight, we might have a stronger argument on the close side here, but totally yeah. agree there. And the Jagos fight, if you remember, that was a short notice fight for Jagos because it was supposed to be Darius on that card. Hard. Darius got injured. Jago stepped in. There was also a weird thing going on with his management because at the time, Jakar was rep by Iridium. Jagos is also rep by Iridium. I know it kind of messed things up to the point of where Jakar actually left Iridium at that point and signed with Daniel Rubenstein. So uh, just saying like, look, I don't want to be with a management company that reps so many fighters. I don't want to have, you know, certain people playing favorites, whatever. So that was a good win for, for uh, Jakar at the time. But again, some weird circumstances where switch up an opponent and all that other stuff. So we'll see. This is going to tell us a lot here. You're right. Because Pena is a guy, I agree, that, you know, could surprise us here on Saturday. And, and Close might be, you know, maybe a bit overrated. But at the same time, I, I tend to lean more on the side that I think Close is actually a pretty decent fighter and i think if he can just use his if his head's right and he's ready to go i, I think he can get the win here but we'll see this is why i like talking with you man because we're always getting different angles on this stuff absolutely and the chat loves when we disagree and we're not just you know patting each other on the back the exactly. entire time so this is perfect but and i just want to say i do think close is a good fighter i actually mm -hmm. really like close but when it comes to situational stuff the fact that he doesn't have a head coach right now, the fact that he's jumping from place to place and he's lost, that's a spot I want to fade. 100%. That's a yeah, spot that I want to That against. is a red flag. That is absolutely a red flag. When he told me that, I was like, because like Fight Ready, they actually, well, to be fair, a lot of fighters left the lab at that time, right? It wasn't just him. It yes. was Hunter Azier, Bobby Moffitt, a lot of, the, there was a big falling out with John Crouch. I don't know what the deal is. I never sort of got the story there, but uh, you know, that was, that was part of it. But I mean, Eddie Cha, like, Come on, they're talking Korean zombie striking coach, like one of the best. Who's uh, Eddie Chaw's working with Pitbull now? I don't know if you saw that yeah. on Instagram. Like, this is one of the best coaches in the world. So I don't know what happened there. It's unfortunate because I think an Eddie Chaw coach, Dracar Close, is a better fighter, but we'll see. Great point about him not having a head coach. All right. And now, James, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. You are a dang it, I forgot. Who's your team? Who's your hockey team, James? Canucks, man. Canucks. Okay. I, yeah. I thought so. I thought so. Yeah. All right. Yeah, 